When I think about the victory, and as a black man, all that's pitted against me, can I get an amen? We see successful people every day, on TV, on social media, and in person. We see the finished product, but rarely do we get to see the process that led to their success. So, all right, so let's, 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 let's go back really quickly. Um, you, so you, you, you're with your crew and you have your, your first big break. What was, what was that like? What, hap what happened? Um, okay, so like I said, I had situations with Rowdy Records. I had a situation with, I forgot to mention these cats who were on campus at the same time, the group Shy. Okay. And If okay. I Ever Fall In Love, oh, man. mega hit. You know what I'm saying? Again, Howard. That's all how it. I, I heard they were like doing the, the, the summer jams and all that. Oh back, yeah, back oh, then, man. oh man, they were huge. You know? I mean, they were huge. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them. But one of the cats called Martin. He because of that situation, because of the status the shot was on, called Martin got a deal with MCA. Okay. And so what he did was, is he reached back and he signed me. Right. And so I was a signed artist in 1995. Okay. Okay. But the mix wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a fantastic writer, but he's an R&B cat. Mm -hmm. And they basically gave him the reins and said, yo, do whatever you want to do. And I, can't, I think he was kind of dependent on me to, to, to do a lot of, but I'm, you know, still a novice to this too. I mean, I mean, I'm an MC, but when it comes to, you know, just putting it all together, you know what I'm saying? We need a team. So yep. I think it was a little premature. And so as, when I was signing him, we got to bring D Dot back into the fold. Okay. Now D Dot is already up, you know, doing things with Puff and all that other yeah. stuff. But then this other cat, Mark Pitts. Okay. Yep. Howard right. again. Howard he came in with me. Now for the people that don't know who Mark Pitts is, he's still like I said when we talk about people at the top of the food chain right now, mm -hmm. he's at the top of the food chain. He, he's responsible for the likes of the Chris Browns of the world. Yep. And, yep. and the Ushers of the world, and he A and R Ushers greatest album which is Confessions, Confessions to me. You know what I'm saying? Um he he's responsible for the J. Coles of the world. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like this oh, yeah, is Mark so he's Pitts. Still, yeah, he's, yeah. And so heavyweight in the game. Heavyweight in the game. So then Dot, you know, told Mark, like, even though we I knew Mark because we came in together, I don't think he knew that I get down, that I get busy on the mic. So Dot told him like, yo, on the hills of Mark being Big's manager, mm -hmm. up under Puff, Mark got a deal with Universal. And so Mark was looking for artists to sign. And so Dot went to Mark and said, yo, you know Trey? He's like, I know Trey. He's like, yo, you know he get, he get busy. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, Dot is responsible for getting in Mark's ear to at least give me an opportunity to get him some music. Okay. So I sent Mark the music, sent Mark um, a couple of demos, the tapes he gave, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, Mark, he was listening to it and he was like, yeah, he's dope, but I think this is just speculative because Mark always told me the story. Mark would listen to my tapes with Big in the car. Wow. The Notorious B.I.G. Wow. And so I think Mark was feeling it, but I think Big put the stamp on it. Okay. Because I think he, he, he always would mention to Mark like, yo, your man is nice. Your man is nice. Your man is nice. So, and these are the stories that Mark told me. So Ooh. I think... Based off of that, there was two songs in particular. It was a joint called Repent that, that made the album. Okay. And then there was another song called No Doubt that never made the album. Shout out to Scotty Beats, who's, okay. a, who's a legend that a lot of cats may not know, but in the D.C. and Virginia area, in this mm. area, um, at Night Flight Studios, me and Scotty, Scotty was the cat that I attached to when I got here musically mm -hmm. that helped me develop my sound. Okay. He passed away... I want to say about 10 years ago, okay. but that was my brother, you know what I'm saying? And he produced that record, uh, no doubt. And I think that's, those are the two records that got me signed mm -hmm. to Mark in, 19, in the spring of 1996. Wow, wow. So, 
Goodness. We buy Storm Universal as the label. Okay. And I was his first artist, Mark Ooh. Pitts. So remember that. I was the first artist that Mark signed, and look where Mark is today. You dig me? Mm. Like, you know, I think his track record is, is speaks for itself as far as the caliber of people that he that he did. Absolutely, with, you know absolutely. Man, I didn't I didn't know. I didn't know about I mean I you didn't tell me the specifics of that part of how you got with Universal, but I didn't know about even Big, you know, being in the in the car listening to. That's I told that's, you I got great. some jewels, man. Oh, you got you got a lot You're of jewels. Getting exclusives man. right here. <laughs> I got so, a story about Big too. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Nah, he this. bit. Nah, nah, and I t- and I've told this to, <laughs> to a couple of people. I think he bit my line, son. Okay. Like no, he, he, got, heard, he heard. He heard. He heard. Repent. Like I told you, I think these are the joints that that that. Uh, was it? Was it just? It was just, just those two records on there. When no, they, but it was a bunch of records on there. It was a bunch, the, but I, but I, no, I, I think Mark fell in love with those two. With those two. Okay. But but there was a joint called Repent that I said a line like, um, when I say, fed up with all of you wanna be mobsters, selling your souls for Grammys when you should have got Oscars for acting, after dramatics and all the yap and blah blah blah. But okay, that line. And pay extra special attention to fed up with all of you want to be mobsters selling your souls for Grammys when you should have got Oscars for acting. So then Big, in a song called I Love the Dough, okay. which is on Life After Death that he did with Jay-Z, yep. he mentioned a line in there, and I wish I knew it verbatim, but it was something to the effect of the actors and the Oscars and the da-da-da. <laughs> so Dot brought it to my attention. He was like, look. I don't know if you bit the line or not, <laughs> but the first time I heard somebody say that was you. So I don't know, but that's my. But I. But I. But I take it as he didn't bite it. I mean, because that's fire. Yeah, he. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He. Kind of like. Kind of like paying some re- some respect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let the big fella off the hook. <laughs> You know what I mean? I ain't that's gonna say dope. that. Definitely, line, I definitely but I know think that's you cool. respected my skills. That was like, okay, you know. And it's so, man, it's so crazy too, cause it's like we we on the same page, cause I was about to go into to to Biggie right before I do that. Though I wanted to to ask you when you when you sign with Universal and now yeah. you're with them. Uh, matter of fact, no, I want I want let me get to Biggie because I want to actually get into when you on Universal and some of the some of your records like from the '90s that were hits yeah. during the '90s. So let's yeah. since we're talking about Big, okay, let's talk let's talk about the legend, man. So, um, man. You are you're you're one of few artists that had the opportunity to not only be in studio with Big, but to actually make a record with Big. So I want you I want you to talk about whatever you remember from the, from the, from those times. Talk about that and, and tell us about the, what the record was and how that all kind of came to be. Oh man, that's well, major. Oh yeah, well I mean it, I'll paint the picture again. It was night. It was um, D and D Studios. Shout out to uh, DJ Premier. It was his studios, in his studio at the time. Um, we had a session. Mark set it up. Of course, Mark being Big's manager and the relationship that they have, it was easy. He asked Big, you know, do a record with my mm-hmm. artist, and because I think Big respected what I was doing, it's like, yeah, I do it. Plus, he got a bag for it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's that's an easy thing to do. You know what I mean? So Definitely. studio time set up. Big's already there before I get there. Okay. I walk in the door, and Big's there, but then Jay Z's in there. I didn't know that. You see what I'm saying? With the he's still in can't knock the hustle mode. This is I did not know this that is part. this is December 1996, <laughs> December 6th, I believe. He got the mink on, you know what I'm saying? I shook his hand, hands is baby soft, which was kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Kinda weird a little that different time. to me, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he you know, felt like a fresh manicure. <laughs> so he's in there, and then um, you know he he um, after the fact he leaves. So then it's just me, Big, my crew. Um, I think Caesar's in there, Mark is in there. Okay. Um, so we kind of just sitting in the room. And Big is just hitting me with jewels at the time because, you know. You're always kind of just talking, just yeah. chopping it up at, at that point. And, and and you got to remember, man, Big had been in this game probably since like 92. Okay. And he was at the top of the food chain. So anything yep. that he's talking about at that particular time, I'm soaking up. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm absolutely. getting game from the, from the, from the guy, absolutely. the guy at the time. 
So he's just giving me all these jewels, and we just, you know, he's telling stories, and he's laughing, and he's telling me about, you know, his, his future aspirations and what he's trying to, what's his next move and all this other stuff. But all the while, you know, he got the Hennessy, he got the, he got the, he's rolling up, and he'll, like, after talking and making people laugh for a second, he'll just black out. And the beat's playing in the back. The beat's playing in the back that we're supposed well, to do this record. Exactly. Okay. So he'll just black out. And you just see him rolling his body. And so we in there talking about it. But I'm peeping what he's doing. So then he'll come back to the conversation, crack a joke, da 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 and then it just go back zone to out. Zone. And so after like the third or fourth time, I'm looking over there, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yo, chill, chill. So then, and this goes on for about eight hours. And finally, after the last, He's like, all right, I'm ready. And so, you know, I'm like, ready to do what? Because, mind you, back then, the, the customary way of writing rhymes, you got a pen and a pad. Yep. So I yep. got my pen and a pad, so I'm listening to the beat, and I'm just jotting down certain things. But all the, t all the while, I'm not knowing that this cat is actually writing. It? He's writing it in his head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's probably what this whole know. time. Or, or he or got it from versa. Jay, don't yeah, know, don't you know, know what I'm saying? But I was like, so he gets in the booth and he's like, yo, so you gonna freestyle? And he's like, nah, I, I, it's in my head. He's like, I said, so where's your pen and your pad though? He's like, nah, I can't write it down, it confuses me. Wow. And I didn't understand what he was talking about at that particular time. So then come to realize the method in which Big does his, and this is why he, to me, he's the most efficient MC in the history of, 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 of the music, of the culture. Mm -hmm. It's because he says more with less. What, okay. what, what, what Big does is find the right words to okay. say in the pocket of a beat, mm -hmm. as opposed to putting a whole lot of words in the pocket so that it's, it's like da 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 He's dancing, he's swaying mm -hmm. in the pockets of the beat. So that's why it sounds like a sing-along every time that he runs. Yeah. First things first, I'm, I'm pop. What do you, what do you say? First things first, I'm pop of freak salt, the honeys. You know what I'm saying? It's exactly. like you, you, you can, can sing like it. <laughs> it's melodic. Yep. So and and that and that is because of his writing style, and it made it easier for him. You know what I'm saying? To memorize it as he's going along, as opposed to writing it down on paper and then trying to transfer from the paper to the mic. It's exactly. like cut out the middleman. Exactly. Just go straight to the mic with it. You know what I'm yep. saying? So he does this, eight hours, gets it done, he gets in the booth, and then he starts to join off and like, fuck that, I preach it, my non reaches. Hold up, bring that back. Fuck that, I preach it, my non reaches, the prestigious, and just kind of pieces it, piecemeals Piece it, it all together. the way down. Okay. Until you get this incredible verse, verses, some of the most incredible yeah. verses I ever, I'm like, yo, what? And, and matter of fact, you know, I was happy with my first 16. Okay. I was happy with my, my next eight. But then he says these lines about, you know, me and my nigga Lance took Kim and C's advance, bought 10 bricks, four pounds of weed plants from Branson. Now we lamp in 12 room mansion. Bitches get naked off, get money, play his anthem. I'm like, wait a minute, okay. You like, I gotta go back. <laughs> I said, my last eight after that, I was like, I can't follow that right yeah. there because what he did was he cheated. He got personal. He got he 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 started digging lyrics and started putting lyrics together that everybody in the world knows. You know, you know, Lil Kim, you know Lil C's, you know get money, play his anthem. So yep. it's like when you hear him spit these bars, it's like, oh shit, is that what is that? And I'm the new guy. Yep. Like y'all don't know me yet. Exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Really say so I gotta reestablish myself and oh, like man. God, yeah, so and I and I think, you know, one of the things that he did tell Mark. I think he respected my talent, but I think one of the things he told Mark was, your man is nice, because we, we dropped albums on the same day of the same year, which was dumb on Universal Park, in my opinion. Okay. You don't drop an album oh, on yeah, the same we talk, day. We, talk, yeah, we, we'll get, about, we definitely going to get to that when we talk you know about Universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he said, your man is going to finish in second. He said, your man's nice, but he's going to finish in second. So I think when he got on this record, he was coming for my neck. 
Okay. And, but 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 it was some MC, yeah. and I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. I mean, as an MC, that's what you're supposed to do. True. Because I'm gonna come for your neck too. So Absolutely. he was trying to haymaker me out of here. Like I'm gonna hit you with the. And to this day, I hear a lot of people say. Yo, th- those bars are some of Biggie's best bars. So yeah. you know what I'm saying. Oh no, because you, you know about you know what I'm going. Next. What what what? You know what I'm going next, man. What? Uh, while we while we talking about that because. Oh, I know. So what so you're so, doing. so you. But real quick, yeah, I want to yeah, ask you. I want to yeah, ask you. I want to yeah. ask you. So, you said you had already laid out 60, 16, and then you laid out your eight. Eight. Uh huh. Um, and there was another eight I had to go after, after his after sixteen. That, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And w- would you say that that eight was better than everything from before? Uh, it was on par. I, I, I was sat because one of the things that we were doing, at least in my mind, is like it was two things I was trying to accomplish. One thing is I'm, I'm going to stand toe to toe on my body. This dude, I don't care who he is, mm-hmm. which I, you know, I think I stood toe to toe with him. But the other thing was I wanted to make a great record. Absolutely. So when those last eight bars came in, it was more so to keep the cohesiveness of what was going on with the record because okay. I think what I had before it didn't really match. It didn't okay. really fit. Not to not to say that the bars weren't dope, but I couldn't use those bars after what he just said. You okay, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to yeah. make sure that it matched so that the the the, the record still sounded. I cohesive. see what you're saying. So it's, it's almost like. You know, a part of you is like, okay, we kind of, we kind of, mm-hmm. th- like you said, throwing haymakers at mm-hmm. each other, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I still want this to be a record yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, for, and, for the but people. we wasn't battling, it was just yeah. a battle of the bars. Who yeah, got yeah. better bar? He wasn't coming at Cut, me like, yo, Trey, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, big, I'm a, nah, it was like, who got the better bars? The better Who's going to stand, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. it, it, had to, it had to encompass both things. It had to be dope bars, but it had to be a cohesive uh, body of work. Okay, okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that part of the journey. That's right, we'll be back. Until next time, I'm Carl Nelson, creator of Intern Media. I gotta thank God. When I think about the victory, and as a black man on this pitted against me, can I get an amen?